Into the Nexus is a production of AMove.TV. Bookmark AMove TV for other great video games and esports podcasts. Into the Nexus is sponsored by listeners like you via patreon.com slash ITN. Welcome back, everybody. It's Into the Nexus time. I'm Garrett Weinzerl. He's Kyle Ferguson. And we are wearing very uh, spiffy horde jerseys. It's an audio podcast for a lot of you, but, you know, it's a good it's a good jersey. I'm assuming you can't hear me because it's doing that weird ducking thing. It was, but now I'm back and I can hear you. Welcome. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I, I figured you were talking about how fabulous we look. And yes, we look fabulous. Oh, we look so good. We look so oh. good. Big thanks to, uh, to the Heroes team for sending us... Uh, Horde jerseys, and this explains the email I got from them uh, that just asked Horde Alliance. There was nothing else in the email, and I was just like, um, for the Horde? <laughs> Horde did win the streamer event this past week, though I heard they got a little try-hard, and the Alliance had to, you know, tried to have some fun with it. I ran my own experiments this week, actually counting for an entire day of Hero League. Alliance Horde, who got the most kills just kills no assists mm. and alliance won by a landslide let me tell you <laughs> so i think alliance might have the better heroes maybe but we've got spirit we do we do i was gonna say what you said at the top before you got into the stats thing you know isn't that the story of horde versus alliance you know the the horde wins and the alliance try to have some fun yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm having difficulties, man. It feels like I'm trapped inside a romantic comedy when you get to WoW lore. It's just all a big misunderstanding, and we just need to chase everybody to the airport and kiss. <laughs> Is there something specific that came up recently that made you uh, land on that realization? Oh, that that whole the whole thing with the, the broken shore and the they walking away and, no, we need you, and uh, it's just sad. It's sad. Ah, gotcha. It could gotcha. have been friends. Yeah, yeah, that, that, they really seem to be doubling down on that, and uh, I'm not yeah, I'm not as in, I don't buy it, I don't buy it as much. I think the writing's a little weird right now over in Warcraft land. But it's time to face the strange. The strange? Yes, chain, chain changes, man. This oh, dude. Yeah. A nutty week. Uh, so, strap in, listeners, because this is going to be a very, very thick episode, and we are pretty much just going to talk about patch notes that's it uh and uh, we're, we're gonna start with what is currently live in the game how the game has already changed and we're going to end with how the game is about to change with the rainer and asmodan reworks that were announced today so there's a lot to cover let's get into it this week's heroes of the storm news we're on boys <laughs> let's liven up this place the moment is upon us yes i'd mana tap that so we got a patch yesterday, Kyle, yesterday. The long-awaited Urel patch. Yes. Unless you're me and you're not playing a lot of Urel, then you weren't really waiting for it. No, but you will, if you play this weekend, enjoy the bumper cars fiasco. Bumper cars? Oh my goodness, she's everywhere now. She got a really decent buff. <laughs> Might be actually a little too much. And last night, I kid you not... Johanna Condemn, my poor variant, rode the Johanna Condemn into a Junkrat bomb, which to place me into the enemy, where the Dragon Knight kicked me, and Yorel knocked me back. Ah, okay. A I kind of see. Exchange. Okay, so you're saying uh, too many displacement abilities. <laughs> There's a lot of them. Maybe I was just riding a particular team's strategy, but whoo, she's good. She's really good. In the solo lane, she was owning our Ragnaros. She's been just a force, but they didn't put the stuff where we thought it was going to go. You know, she's got this big old crystal hammer. It's kind of her thing. Yeah. That thing still does terrible damage. Oh, it's just, it's awful. But again, paladin with a giant hammer. This is the history of Heroes of the Storm. Now that we have two paladins with giant hammers and they both hit like they've got a pillow at the end of a stick. Yeah, I, I, maybe it's the fabulous animations that make her look so flashy and that sort of lock eyes thing that the new players have when they're on Urel and they go, oh, and they charge up and they start marching. And you think, man, that thing's charging for a long time. That's going to hurt like the Dickens. And 
boo. It moves Nothing. you. It moves you. That's it. It does. It I has move. the power to move you. Um, <laughs> yeah, man. I, now I see what you're getting at with the bumper cars. I uh, I didn't have a chance to play yesterday when this patch went live, but I did have a chance to play quite a few games today. And honestly, most of my games were pretty sane uh, and pretty cool and gave me a good idea of what's going on with the heroes that I wanted to try out. Uh, Johanna being being one of the big ones. I had, a, I had just a phenomenal Johanna game. I had a phenomenal Rhaegar game. And then I was like, I can squeeze one more in. Let me go into quick match. Who else am I really interested in that got changed? I know, Zul'jin. And that was the game I got the bumper car uh, 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 composition on the other side. And it was the worst game of Heroes I've had in probably like a year. Or at least that felt like it. Yeah, Zul'jin got a nice little you know change up a little bit this week. Some bacon. But yeah. he is still weak to the mobility and displacement as yeah. he always was. Yeah. And that's not me complaining about like the changes of the game overall. That's just me complaining about me getting Zul'jin into that particular quick match scenario. It was a bad time. Bad time. Uh, I mean, it's a really odd time for these changes to hit. Last week, we talked about how we were moving away from double tank into solo tank with a nice kind of bruisery assassin to help you kill that enemy tank. And... With these changes today on your rel, it feels like we're going to fly right back into double tank, perhaps, since she can solo that lane and Blaze had such a good performance in the midseason brawl. What I'm seeing right now is dive town. Everything is about forward momentum. And even your Deckard in the background, you know, your Rhaegars now, everything is pushing forward. And if you can't withstand that force, you're not going to survive out there. I... Uh... I think you might be onto something. Uh, so shall we dive into what the hell is actually going on with URL? Because um, quite a few things changed. Uh, as you said, it does appear that she has been buffed. Uh, the heroes team uh, in the balance note and the patch notes for this uh, for this balance update uh, confirmed that her win rate was on the rise, uh, but they were still lower than they wanted them to be. And apparently, they noticed that they were significantly higher uh, for URLs that were above level ten versus folks that were still learning her. Which is a lot, actually. I got my URL, a fan of URL, no less, to nine. So I wasn't even a part of the statistic. <laughs> no, you were part of the, the lower win rate statistic. Maybe not you I specifically. Guess. Maybe you were. Uh, I'd like to think that you helped keep it uh, even even higher than, than it would have been otherwise. But No, I went colossal smashing all last week. <laughs> God, I'm glad I wasn't around for that. Um <laughs> So anyway, they what they really want to do is they wanted to lessen how badly she's countered by interrupts. This is something that you've been talking about for a while, Kyle. And uh, so they, they took two seconds off of Divine Purpose's cooldown. So you can have more instant channeled, well, <laughs> instant not channeled abilities. The big thing and the big surprise here is the direction they took her in. Because that, that was an expectation, right? Either they were going to change the channel time, which they decided not to do, because it's an animation issue, actually. If you decrease the amount of time she winds up, there's really nice animations that would suddenly be sped, and she might look a little weird, a little claymation-y on the field. Well, in, in Matt Fee's, um, uh comment about that, it sounds like they might still want to shorten it, but that because of the effort that will have to go into uh, altering the animation itself, that uh, they didn't want to uh, try and make it happen at, uh, for this patch, making it sound like it was rather time intensive and they had a date to hit for this patch. I mean, we've had 24 hours with this patch. It's not really even enough to look at statistics at the moment, but it feels good and that may not be required. The big choice they made and we were all wondering, was it going to be a tank? Was she going to start regenerating more? And that was going to make her resilient, but ignorable? Or were they going to take her in more of a bruiser role? And they did the bruiser thing, but not on the talent or the skills you would think. It's Avenging Wrath, her leap. This changes so much. She now has an AoE jump slam that does pretty decent lane clear. And our old engage had you charging up for distance. But if you actually read the text, she doesn't get more damage as this charges. All you do is increase the distance of the jump. So on a dime, you can do really good damage. And if you take your level seven talent, you can Mario the enemy team to death <laughs> with your resets. Oh, man, I hadn't thought about that. That's gross. I had a game yesterday that came down to a cursed hollow boss fight. 
And I jumped on top of the pad to, you know, hold it, thinking, oh, I'm a tank. I'm going to hold this till my team can catch up. Instead, I just wiped the team out by going boom, boom, boom on top of them over and over again, thanks to my reset level seven talent. So you just created your own bunny hop. Yeah, actually, yes. <laughs> That's then you add so a slow good. to that of 75% for 1.5 seconds at level 13. It can get a little crazy. Granted, you're missing out on the cool stuff like Divine Steed in that case. Uh, the armor talent did get a buff, Aegis of Light, so that's 35 armor to your allies when you're doing that Mario mode, but not yourself. So there are the limitations there, but wow, really oppressive. Okay, uh, my really only last question for you about Urel uh, is about Gift the, Nar the Naru. What do you think about that nerf? Because it's it's over a 30% reduction of the healing at level 4 if you were going Gift of the Naru. That, to me, as a non Urel player, I look at that and go, that seems excessive. It is, and it's a very clear decision to make. They did not want her being off Uther. They don't want this to be kind of a monk sort of situation, a hybrid, where you might run her instead of an Uther even. It's... It's a bit of a blow to what I was enjoying, but it does make the other talents, that Aegis of Light that gives you the 35 armor to your allies or the Hand of Freedom, which they increase the movement speed up to 50%. So now it's more about movement speed and less about breaking those roots and those slows. It doesn't make you resilient in the first place. It's not a cleanse. So this movement speed really helps out that talent to be effective alongside your allies. Clear, clear decision made here. And... I I think it's really good. I think if you played her before, you would have Engine Wrath into the lane, knock that orb back into your side, isolate that XP perhaps a little bit. Now you actually clear as part of that first jump, and then the swing just finishes it off. It gives you a safe place to pick that orb up. I like that. Yeah. Um, what do you think of the, the shift in playstyle? It, it seems to be pushing this idea of engaging of always engaging of having your jump on cooldown so you're not you're not thinking of it as an escape anymore well the good thing is that if you use it for engage you're doing it at max distance when you use your trait divine purpose to get that instant full cast so that's what you use to close. And then once you're on top of them, you don't need to close anymore. So you can use the little mini hops to start doing damage with it. She has zero poke. There's nothing on this kit that can really reach out and grab or interrupt. So you have to engage. So I think in that way, it's the right decision. There's a, there's a theme here. Yeah. And it makes her different than Muradin in that case. Because Muradin, you can still kind of see him, you know, he, he squeezes in that storm bolt and does the interrupt on the curse. But this still has to be your rail getting in the business. So are you doing basically an all Avenging Wrath build? That's what I've played with the most, and that's taken me on to Sacred Ground because at 20, you can move your Sacred Ground with your jumps along the way. I had a great time with it. I think Gifted Naru still has that great place among, you know, alongside Bright Wings and other characters that may not be able to heal off burst damage, particularly poison damage. There's been many times where I'm running alongside an ally who is just going to die, and that little catch to just stop that tick is enough to keep them in the game, and that's a big deal later on. It's a I've, strong piece of utility. Yeah, but 16, you know, I'm still going with that Divine Favor for even more of the Divine Purpose procs. They changed up Templar's Verdict to actually increase the armor reduction from two seconds of 20 armor reduction to four seconds of 20 armor reduction. And that means there's more time to target. So she's a very busy character, but what's happening around her has slowed down, and that's going to make her more readable to her allies. And same thing going on with that Hand and Freedom, increasing the movement speed. I think if she finds her play style in the solo lane, and I think that really depends on the public perception lots of people aren't doing it right that's kind of a negative way to put it but it's got to look good when blaze goes off in solo lanes and he dies there everyone goes whoa that's not supposed to happen but right now urel dies in solo lane and like mm, urel sucks so if we can make that transformation as a community 
this will be a frequent character, particularly alongside other knockarounds like Johanna. Hmm. I like that. Well, let's talk about some of the other heroes that got buffs. Uh, these are all pretty minor, uh, especially compared to Urel in terms of what's been happening here. But Cassia got a little bit of attention. Uh, Seraph's him has new functionality. Uh, so it's uh, it reduces Blinding Light's cooldown and mana cost by 33%. And basic attacks against blinded enemies deal 100% bonus damage. This is nice. Her previous version was a little tame and lame, you could say. And now it has a pick rate, perhaps. This is sitting at 6.1 popularity compared to the other talents available at one for Cassia. Right. And many people call Cassia, you know, a sleeper hit. And she is. Her win rate is good, 52%. She can solo in certain situations. Her. It's important to note here, though, when you're going to be drafting Cassia, if you're excited about these buffs, her trait only works for auto attacks. And we do now have spells on Maiev that deal physical damage. And those do bypass this. So she's not quite a full counter to all auto attack types. Yeah. Physical damage types, I should say. So Sarah Sim is, you know, that's that's a, a some love to an underpicked talent, uh, as you've already kind of picked out. But what happened at level seven, I mean, this is arguably just a buff. I mean, level seven actually has pretty decent talent diversity from the stats that we can see. Um, but Impale is getting its, uh, its bonus damage threshold uh moved from 50 to 60 percent of your target's maximum health that's a good thing that means that the bonus damage now comes online uh sooner and this is of course up to again up against that surge of light that is the aoe damage for her impale and fend in general is dangerous to do and if you can make the right choice of when to invest and stop moving and start taking that full damage again you can play cassio well We'll see. We'll see. It, it's still really dangerous to fend. And I don't know if that exchange is enough for the pros to start getting involved with Cassia heavily. Hmm. Well, let's talk about what happened with Greymane. Gunnane Cocktail has shed a whole second off of its cooldown. Good. More cocktails more often. Uh, perfect game at level one got a a sizable buff to its mana refund. It's going from 35 to 45. That gets us back in. This is really interesting pile of changes because Greymane is being worked back up from being worked down in almost this exact same way. Gilnea's cocktail was really the target of all the previous nerfs. Yeah. Yeah, and then just uh some some talent adjustment at 13 visceral attacks is just gone. It's not in the game anymore. And then now Unfettered Assault also causes your basic attacks when you're in Worgen form to reduce Razor Swipe's cooldown by one and a half seconds. So they did a bake in here. So your old distance on your swipe is now part of the auto attacks reduce, reduce the swipe cooldown. When I was reading this in order, I thought this was just straight up gone, not a bake in. Because this is one of those weird talents that is really powerful on Battlefield of Eternity. Granted, it's at 13, so it's not a horror show. We don't need to worry about it in most Battlefield of Eternity games. Game starts getting a little decided by then. But this does give him more burst damage in those really still moments. Yeah. And then Probius showing up. Showing up on the on the change chart. At level 20, Probius Loop, now uh, the required number of heroes hit to create a warp rift, a new one. It's down to one, just one hero. It used to be two. Now, as long as you land the attack, you create a new warp rift. This was really hard to do with two heroes. You would spend the entire game to level 20 teaching the enemy that you shouldn't stand in Probius circles. So, of course, come level 20, nobody's really interacting with your Probius circles. And plus, I do feel like, as always, we overpunish grouping a little bit too much and just seeing this talent go to something more generic, particularly for level 20, it's a lot of fun. And my favorite part of this is with the level one Echo Pulse. This is your talent that allows your disruption pulse, your little bolt, to fly out and then return to you. If you have your Warp Rift already open on the field, you hit it, it flies through, reactivates the Warp Rift, and that return will hit it a second time, reactivating the warp with. Damn. I did not know that was a, a an interaction. I mean, 
uh, the if you're ever interested in playing Probius, Echo Pulse is a very powerful talent to make Probius easier to play and more spammable. Because when you throw out your Warp Rift, you can shoot immediately your pulse through it and know that the return shot will still detonate that one that was still forming on the outside there. But this does give a really cool play style to the Echo Pulse build. And I tried it out. It was a lot of fun. I was in quick match, and I was lucky enough to get some uh, Infernal Shrines. <laughs> Why ever would you be so excited about that, Kyle? It's only my favorite map. <laughs> uh, let's, let's go ahead and pause here, and I'll, I'll fix the issue. Oh, gotcha. Sure thing. This will not be cut out of the VOD, so hello, YouTube. This is what happens sometimes live. All right. Sorry about that. No, it's all right, man. I just, uh, first I was just like, I think I'm hearing that. And then eventually I was like, yep, yep. That's coming through loud and clear. So you good to go, get back on the horse. Yep. All right. Bring it on. Were you starting the recording? All right. So you're really stoked about Probius. I'm really stoked about this Anna change. So, uh, so Anna, if you're un un not familiar, uh, or, or unaware of the fact uh, yesterday when this patch went live, Shrike now also applies doses to structures. So, a bit odd, flavor-wise, but I've never really understood the whole pile of needles thing that she's got going on. <laughs> but this is a big deal. Uh, yes. Yeah, I mean, this, is, this just makes her contribute to the push. Right. And there are many heroes, Malfiel being one of them, that when they reach the wall, things just kind of stop. And that's not always bad, because you can make very clear value decisions. I'm mouthy, I reach the wall, I don't deal percent-based damage to buildings. So why don't I go multi-soak? Why don't I go take a Merc camp? I've got these choices now. With Ana, you're probably assisting somebody, and you want to heal. And then everyone says, target, target the buildings, but you're solo support, and you gotta get your health up. So you had to target the lane minions, you had to target heroes to try to get those procs. Now you can heal off hitting buildings, and it just helps her out. Yeah, it it just it makes more sense in the in the in the way that the game is played, as you just described. Um, yeah, don't think about it too much from like a lore perspective. It makes no sense. Uh, but in terms of gameplay uh, and ease of use, I really like this change. I like this change a lot. Uh, Deckard, more Nados at twenty is getting the cooldown reduction increased from five to six seconds. Cool. I like it. I don't really take more NATOs, but if you do, that's sweet. Uh, and then there's a Nubarak. Nullification shield is gone in its place. Hardened shield. Wait a minute. I quit this game, Kyle. Why is that? Because Arthas still doesn't have it back. Oh. <laughs> I thought you were going to uh, make sort of a, 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 a comment on our long spell of changes for a Nubarak and how the team has continued to try to force him away from Muradin. And now we're kind of back in that homogenization territory. Mm. No, I'm just mad that Arthas still has anti-magic shell. Sure. It's That's a, fair. It's bad. It's just the worst version of the shield he used to have. And now here I, is Nubarak getting basically Arthas's old shield. I mean, this was nearly useless. Your shielding, your basic shield was giving you 40 spell armor. You had rewind available at 20, so if you needed armor for spells, you could get it somewhere else and have a whole pile of stuns behind it. Here you go, Kyle, bringing sense to me being just personally offended. Oh, no, no, be offended. But <laughs> actually, you know, I've come I've come down a little bit on Arthas because I've been playing Warcraft 3 campaign, and, uh, well, he's real slow. He's real clunky. That death coil casts extra super slow. So he's spot on. Yeah, it's not too bad. I would still really like him to not have to turn around when it, retreating to shoot a death coil, but that's a minor gripe as far as I'm concerned. Uh, Blaze, bunker dropped. Ten more seconds added onto its cooldown. It's now a full minute. For the memes, perhaps. But uh, you know, this is for the pros. The armor that you're able to get inside of this 
is very valuable. They stop mm-hmm. people from doing the full blown dance to kind of get in, get out, get in, get out. But I've seen some crazy, crazy things with Bunker recently, and I think that's good. Plus, they want to inspire people to use combustion by increasing its damage by a minor amount. It's a tiny, tiny amount from 48 to 52. That's less than a 10 percent increase. The real interesting one here is feed the flames. Oil spill cooldown reduction increased. This is a rather important talent level for Blaze. In fact, many of you will know it as the level that you pick up adhesive petroleum that does the slow when you ignite, and that slow continues once they move off the fire, making it so valuable. But in my experiments with Blaze this week, if you can hit two heroes with your flame stream, remember, each there's two streams. So if you hit both, you get two stacks you can have infinite oil spill under your feet. And with Volskaya re-entering the ranked rotation this week, that is a Blaze playground. And you can be always on fire if hitting heroes. Mm. That's a lot of regeneration. Uh, I just pulled up the stats because I haven't looked in a while. It's looking like we're all going to have to uh, train our brains on Feeding the Flame because it has so few picks, there's not even a win percent stat uh, associated with it. The old version just wasn't very interesting. And like I said, it's up against great stuff. Really, when you're looking at your your flame stream, you're trying to decide if your particular build needs to use the flame stream to light the fires or to hit enemy heroes. The reason you want to hit enemy heroes is because Pyromania has an aspect of it that every time you hit flame stream, you reduce its cooldown by five seconds, giving you more uses of this four second long 25 armor and dealing damage in the area around you. You can also take that level 13 that reduces spell damage when you hit people with your flame streams. And I've always liked that a lot. Now that focus can be forward if you do that build and it inspires you to later continue to put those flame streams into the enemy. The damage is minor. You're looking at, you know, regeneration tank levels of damage. This is, you know, stitches slam. It it hurts if you spec and do it, but for the most part, not the scariest thing on the battlefield. Hmm. Well, uh, if you thought combustion was a small adjustment, uh, you want to see some like really, really small adjustments, Kyle? I do. Cool. Let's look at Diablo's health <laughs> because uh, his health has gone up by less than 2% uh, from 2618 to 2670. And then his health regeneration was increased to just barely over 2%. Uh, really minor buffs to his health and regeneration there. Uh, but what's more interesting and in happening over on Diablo is Apocalypse uh, has had 10 seconds shaved off its cooldown, so going from 100 to 90, while his Lightning Breath uh, gained those 10 seconds, going from 60 to 70 seconds. This has caused a 3% dip in Diablo's win rate, taking him down to 43%. He is falling yet again with these buffs. And it's all due to lightning breath. I mean, even 10 seconds is causing you to get out of position. Diablo's just not performing at the moment. It's one day. I would would take that 3% dip with a grain of salt. It could, I mean, couldn't it also be uh, folks going back over to Apocalypse uh, who maybe haven't used it before or used it recently? It could also be that when I pick Urel in a drafted environment, People go Diablo. We're, a lot of us are banning Garrosh right now. We're banning Garrosh. Mm. We're banning it's Chromies and Phoenixes. Well, were, I guess, because his win rate just kind of snuck up in the background. Lots of Junkrat bans all of a sudden, who I think is the sleeper right now. If you're looking to invest in something, Junkrat hasn't been touched in a long time, and he has a lot of mobility. I agree with that entirely. The, the most trouble I've had against a hero r- lately has been against enemy Junkrats. It's really because I, I haven't been playing against them in a while, and now suddenly I'm seeing junk rats in most of my games, and I'm I'm having to relearn how to dodge grenades. Well, and he has a lot of follow up with these dive comps, and it used to be when you were main tank that you would see the trap on the ground, and you'd go, "Hold up, everybody! I'm gonna step in it." Okay, here I go. All right, now it's off the field, but you're dead because <laughs> everyone sees the root and they go, ooh, that's the guy. And I think Deckard taught us that play style. The triangle rolls out. Is this going to hit somebody? It got somebody. Go. <laughs> I think you're right. I think you're right. I think we were all already in that headspace. Uh, then you bring Junkrat back. You land a trap. We all know what to do. 
So uh, it's that, cool to see his auto attack build get increased here, and dying breath is crazy town because you can get if you hit a lot of heroes four apocalypses in the row if you die with it so people will learn how to play i assume i think so uh i've only seen a couple diablos since the patch hit but they all went armageddon i was i was having the i was back to dodging armageddons uh which i don't think i ever quite got used to lightning breath being in again so it's not that big of a change for me but i haven't been playing diablo just against yeah i mean it used to be that the lightning breath was all about the unstoppable to just stop getting manhandled getting repositioned during our stun stacking days and the damage does ramp up and the slow is rather intense I personally am struggling immensely to get back into Diablo because of the passive spell armor change. It's just gone. Hmm. I want Devil's Due so many times at level one, and I'm not taking Soul Shield. It It's such a fundamental way of how I would peel for my allies catching Leaming Orbs to reduce that value damage into me. And that's a very Hero League kind of thing to say. I'm, I'm catching things for you. Well, we should all dodge. Like, no one has to take a Leaming Orb if we all get out of the way. But I'm doing the team a favor, knowing that that's going to connect on my back line. I'm, I'm not judging you, Kyle. No judgment here. I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, hey, if, if we want to judge something, I'm not sure Varian should be taking poison damage from toads he parried. That, that is <laughs> brutal. You're like, guys, I got it. Oh, there's half my health gone. Oh, I, I made a huge mistake. Yeah. Fair fair um diablo wasn't the only tank getting some health adjustment johanna received a uh, notable health adjustment health and regen increased by over six percent uh which normally i'm really thinking that they adjusted diablos just a little bit so that i looked at johanna's and went oh that's not too bad that's actually a pretty large adjustment johanna is fascinating right now because she is a powerhouse and the aggressive play styles that people learned in previous patches are serving them well. But if she gets low, she can get out. She's got her falling sword. She's got her laws of hope to help out. But in general, healers are just having a really hard time getting Johanna's total health back up. And now we've increased it further. Yeah, but when you're not catching heals, it's good to have the extra hit points. Absolutely. And so rarely, you know, are you actually the main target of those heals when you're Johanna? I know you're my main tank. You're not a regeneration tank. I don't expect you to jump up half like a stitches. But if I'm healing you, you're the last of my worries. Yeah. Yeah. And lots of hope. Still very popular one. It's it's not the most insane uh, self-regenerating tank in the game, but it still helps. Curious to see where she goes and alongside Arthas for that reason ever since the armor changes. Yeah, I don't know. I, 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 I only have anecdotal evidence this has only been live for less than, or a little over 24 hours. I played a couple of games with her today. She felt very good, but I don't know how much of that is actually this health change had any influence whatsoever, just that a lot of players are still used to playing with a Johanna right now, even though she was on the downturn there for a while and could still be for all we know. Grouping up enemies is always a pretty good idea too. Yeah. Yeah, made good friends with a Genji earlier. It's fun. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and then Zuljin, what is going on with Zuljin here, Kyle? So Zuljin has a talent. I'm gonna make sure I say it correctly because I always say the fashion company Amani Rage. <laughs> <laughs> I've never. That's never crossed my mind, and now I can't unhear it. Thank you. Oh, I want the skin so bad. Can you imagine him sitting there in a sleek little suit? Oh, he looks so good. Make that. Make that uh, face towel a tie be fantastic him and him and Zerit will probably love each other's fashion sense naked with face towels there is a talent at level four that would allow you to instantly drop your health down by half giving you a little bit of armor in the background five armor which had been nerfed slowly over time. It used to be 10 armor when this originally came out so that you could maybe drop a big guillotine on top of people or so that you could get a little bit of bonus attack speed or activate many of your talents that become more powerful when you're below a certain amount of health. In, in organized play and in my own team games, I am always telling my team, ignore the Zul'jin, don't touch him. 
because I know that's what I'd want. I want you to beat me up just a little bit, not not displace me, not stud me, but I just want you to you to hit me a little bit so that I can get that attack speed. And this was his way to deal with that health on his own. They baked it into his kit, and it's a great decision. Yep. Uh, so now there's a, there's a talent in its place called Amani Hide. And what it does uh, is it reduces Amani Rage's cooldown by 10 seconds, shaves 10 seconds off, and then uh, gives you that 10 armor while it regenerates the health that it took away. All good changes, but this also opens up the opportunity for you to grab a Voodoo Shuffle, which gives you the break to Roots and Slows, very powerful against characters like Deckard or Arthas, where you're going to be locked in there for a little bit of time. Troll's Blood can help you out a lot if you're doing more of a quick match kind of thing. But, you know, don't forget here that Voodoo Shuffle has the bonus text, lowers the cooldown and mana cost of regeneration by 40%. That's a great talent now, but it could not compare to the old Amani Rage talent. Very cool. So you're going to experiment at level four is what I'm hearing. Exactly. Rad. Well, let's move into the nerfs. Uh, Maev is up first, and there's... A few things here you're going to want to note. So, Warden's Cage. The av the Warden Avatar duration has been cut down to five seconds. It's actually uh, more than a 25% change there. I love this because it's a seven seconds. It's a really long time. And I got stuck in one of these this last week as Zul'jin before the update. And went, why isn't it gone? The whole idea is that it only works once. You bounce once, it's gone. So if you have the mobility and you panic, you can slam and do it. Whoa, okay, why? I'm out, I'm out. It's fine. I did it. I'm out. If you don't have mobility, though, you don't want to bounce because it's just going to ruin your cast times. It's going to you know, kind of do that mini silence when you get moved against your will. It was just punishing. Yeah, seven seconds is a lifetime uh, in a team fight. So five seconds is, is still a lifetime in a team fight. But but I can now make that choice. Previously, if I didn't have the mobility to both deactivate the first hit and get out a second time, you're trapped in. Right, right. This also, uh, what I like about the way that the Warden's Cage works is that if the rest of your team do something to kind of protect you, if you're the one that gets caught in it and kind of push the other team back away from the cage so that they can't kind of engage on it, this really rewards that. Five seconds isn't so long now. There are other nerfs as well, and a lot of these are based around the Cruel Chains build mm -hmm. that was, I'd say, popularized by the pros, but also by a fantastic Reddit post some four weeks ago. And that's why I actually got involved with Maiev a little bit. When you stack up all of your hit two heroes and chain them and pull them back talents, you can do some rather absurd amounts of damage while still performing your primary role that people are going to expect of you. For a fun sake, I want to do Vengeance. I love teleporting around. I think it's really cool that she has one of the earliest giant killer talents with Sudden Vengeance at four. This and these changes could allow that playstyle to be viable, but it's important to note, like all of our Genji and Hanzo nerfs, this isn't really for us at home. This is to stop the pros. Right. Cruel Chain, despite being noticeably nerfed at 16, I think we're still going to see a lot of it, and I think it's still going to be fine. Yep, Umbral Bind is what people expect. It sets you up for more fan of knives, which all your talents tend to rely on. She'll be okay. Got my butt handed to me by one just today. So, <laughs> Was it in that Zul'jin game? It wasn't that Zul'jin game. Yeah, it that's going to happen. It was so bad. It was so bad, Kyle. I can still feel it. Uh, Tracer, basic attack has been reduced by one. 28 to 27. Not too big of a deal. Nope. Nope. Uh, also, Blink's cooldown has had a second added on, so it's up to nine seconds now. This actually is math and is a pretty big nerf. Uh, when when we talk, you know, back in the StarCast days, when you think about StarCraft, there was armor. You could upgrade your units. And by getting one point of armor, your unit could sometimes survive an entire attack that they would die at, meaning they took two attacks, meaning your entire army increased in its value. That's what they've done here. The most popular talent for Tracer at level seven is bullet time, which basic attacks lower the cooldown of blink. 
you now have to go through a full three clips before you're able to get these cooldowns again, rather than just the two clips of before. Right, that's a big change. It, just a second here has done that to her, and it's going to mess up a lot of tracers in your home games as well. She's got a really good home performance at the moment too. Amazing participation throughout the midseason brawl, so it's understandable that she's receiving some nerf, but they did it in this very targeted way. Yeah. Uh, I'm feeling a bit targeted this week as Zagara was also among the nerfed. Uh, basic attack damage has gone from 82 down to 80. That's just slightly less than 3%. Pretty minor there. However, the Hunter Killer had its damage reduced from 68 to 65. That's just under a 5% reduction. And then, le- like, the damage from the... Is it the Roach or the Drop? It's the Roach damage, not the Drop, right? Yeah, these are the individual roaches. Okay, individual roaches. So your roaches are now doing less damage as well from 29 to 27. I'm fine with that as long as I don't get rid of my drop damage. Because when I land a drop, I want to be rewarded for that. Uh, But the big one here is Nidus Network. It had another 20 seconds added onto its cooldown, bringing it up to a full two minutes. And then the uh, cooldown reduction per basic attack while on creeps, your baked in kind of battle momentum, uh, has been drastically reduced it used to be three quarters of a second now it's just half of a second so a bit of a double whammy into the nidus network not only allowing you to get less of them in the first place using your your battle momentum but the overall cooldown has been increased yeah i don't at the end of the day i don't think the 20 seconds is that big of a deal on the nidus network but uh the 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 hit to the cooldown reduction is what really stings for me. Yeah, that's going to be all of her output on everything she does. Right. That's that. That's the spike that happens at ten for Zagara when you pick up Nidus is because you are n- now getting more Hydras out, more Roaches out. She is oppressive. Fifty four in our stats right now, and uh, as of yesterday's patch nearly 60% win rate, so certainly isn't going down, but still early to tell. These nerfs, of course, will have an impact on how fast she can push anything on the map, giving you that extra three seconds to get in range and get her off the building before she takes the keep. Yep, we needed to be done. She was doing too well. Uh, and then Nazebo, who uh, has also been doing fine. Nazebo's kind of always in fashion, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, but Plague of Toads has had its damage per tick reduced by one so from 18 down to 17 and then the gargantuan got a nerf this week it uh, its attack damage has been reduced by 10 and the health has been uh reduced it's now a, an even 2000 health tough to say what the impact of this will be it's certainly a nerf because it is just number reductions i when these things tend to happen with one point of damage it almost feels like the devs are going hey who wants to freak out about this <laughs> who's looking to bail and, and, and troll some nazebos this week and tell them they're doing the wrong build <laughs> I doubt that's the case no and of course every one point of damage with a scaling level system is going to have an impact later on in the game right and you were talking much earlier about how important it is on Yorel if you take Gift of the Naru to be able to save someone from poison damage well if you're taking one less tick of damage that might mean the difference between a death and XP to your enemies and surviving. I'm really confused about the gargantuan changes though with 2000 health. I still don't want to kill it. I would rather we all just run away. Uh, It's not hurting though, right? Like I, I look at this and I'm like, okay, well if you don't kill it and you get smacked by it, it's not as bad as it used to be. If you all decide as a group Uh, as a family, maybe, to kill it, now it's going to die faster. Yeah. I'd love to kill it. I don't like how long it lasts. It's a big deal. It it's always a shame when you look at the mini map and you see Nazebo casting it solo on a fort. I do it too. It's fun. But it it does a lot of damage and it's really good in Infernal Shrines and other places, zoning. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, I treat that thing like freaking uh, Tychus' drill. When it comes down, it's just like, nope, we need this point. You need to kill that thing. Fight it. Fight it. It's not like a phoenix. It's not just like, oh, time to ability. Just walk away. Not that you can fight yeah. the phoenix, but you get my point. 
And then we got some reworks, and uh, Phoenix was one of them. Uh, his health scaling has been reduced. His health regeneration has been reduced. Same thing for the shield capacitor. Basically, across the board, health, regen, shield, shield regen, just under a 6%, 6 reduction across all of those. And Phoenix really was sneaking up in the win rates dramatically. He had not been touched in a long time, which gave him a lot of power. There was all, a bug has also been fixed, by the way. Varian was able to use his shattering throw to target Phoenix's health directly, and he was deleting him in a single combo. Hmm. But that wasn't keeping his win rate down at all. Right, right. Can you call it sneaking? Because, like, man, for me, I, Phoenix never went away. Phoenix has been in my games consistently since launch. I stopped seeing Phoenix entirely when he lost his OP status. And... I, I struggle to think why. I, he is a staple in most gold and platinum games that I watch. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe there's a little more passion down in my neck of the woods, Kyle. Maybe. Maybe, maybe we legitimately enjoy Phoenix and we stick with heroes that we like and know how to play. Right, and we're too busy going, ah, the stats don't matter for us. We're in Masters and Diamond. We play Hanzo and Genji. And we, <laughs> we heal with Alexstrasza because we're crazy good. Like, it just, who knows why exactly that happened. But I do feel like Phoenix has always had a bit of an advantage because he can activate his own executioner. He supplies his slows, which he then does bonus damage on the back of with his Salvo ultimate and also with his spinning laser beam so they upped planet cracker here to try to incentivize you to play with that global beam once again i had a planet cracker in a, in a game on my team today it was so nice to see it back i was we had a phoenix top lane we're down and bottom pushing a team fight breaks out and planet cracker just comes across the map and gets a kill i'm like yes you you were waiting for this change you're the phoenix that this change is for <laughs> it's fun and i think the Game has kind of localized around the team fights, but we still have a lot of people playing the solo game, whether it's Merc camps or solo pushing off in a lane. And I really enjoy when there's just that something on a kit that can allow them to enjoy that play style while still contributing to the greater game. Yeah, I, I like it. I, I like Phoenix. Uh, I just never, I never really. I don't, I don't main him, but I, I, I haven't really stopped playing him either. He's always there. Fight see a see a spot for him uh it's but, it's tough to like pick out a new character or for a new player when you know lots of people ask oh, i want to get into this game particularly because ign just ran a fantastic little video on heroes of the storm they've been redacting their previous 6.5 statements dramatically this whole year really pushing heroes of the storm a lot of people are asking what could i play where should i start and while certainly more complex than well now i'll say old rainer phoenix does feel like a great jump off point and maybe kind of a Li ming in that way here's your spell caster here's your auto attacker i do feel the shield would spoil a new player sure sure because once you get on generating that health yeah any other character you're gonna be like wait what do you mean half my health doesn't just regenerate when i'm not in combat well, and, and for me, for my own excitement, they did a big buff on Warp Warfare, increasing the attack speed from 125 to 175 after you do a Warp In. Okay. I was still thinking about the impact of maining uh, Phoenix out the gate. <laughs> maybe not as, maybe equally as dangerous as maining Sonya. Yeah, no, that's fair. That's fair. And I see a lot, a lot of people kind of get stuck in that bruiser role. They find Sonya, and when she's popular, she's unavailable. She's banned. Maybe she's in the OP state at the moment. Maybe she's just being picked up earlier. And then those players like to go on to Artanis. And that connection can be very difficult to work your way out. You still have Varian, I think, is a great one for those. Leoric can do well. And once you're on Leoric, you start to value your skill shots, which means you move on to Stitches, and the evolution is there. But I feel like there's a big wall that gets hit when you get to Phoenix. Or uh, Artanis. I was, me, I was about to say, Fusion. I'm like, what wall? Okay, yeah, Artanis, I'm, I'm, I, I'm with you there, because uh, no matter how many times I try, about every three months I get it 
in my head that I need to go play Artanis. I'm just terrible with him. I do not understand Artanis. There are important decisions to make about what fights to pick. Yeah. Yeah, the only time it works is when we have some cheesy comp that can just delete if I land a, a shift. I think, too, the uh, the space laser has lost power over the mobility creep years. Oh, definitely. That's, I, I, it would be... I don't know what you do about that, right? Because if you increase the speed with which it moves, then uh, your Zul'jins of the world are even more punished than they already are. Yeah, and I certainly wouldn't want to be Kael'thas, probably the character I'm playing the most in ranked right now, because he has three distinct builds. It's really cool. Build diversity on Kael'thas, believe me. No one's going to like you for it, but there's a great talent build where you can go the full Spheres build with the bonus auto attack spell damage when you're on somewhere like Dragonshire and having a lot of small skirmishes against 1v1s. It's, uh, there's a, and there's a great build in there too with the Ignite now and the Living Bombs. You love Living Bomb builds. And with Double Tank leaving, you don't need the Burned Flesh. Pure damage at level 7, you can go more damage on your spread and take that Ignite later. I'm loving Kale Thos. But there's a lot of times where I got to go run in a couple laps because I've got a space laser on me. And if that thing moved a little faster, I'd be a dead man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, let's move on and talk about Rhaegar because we still have the massive reworks for Esmodin and Rainer to cover. Um, Chain Heal is just better. And dude, you feel it. You really feel it. So the cooldown yeah. is down to eight seconds. The healing is up by just shy of 10%. And then the mana cost has been reduced from 65 to 55. So he's more mana efficient. He's healing more than ever. I I think they just made me go back and become a, a Rhaegar like, main support. Like, this works. This uh, I've only had a, uh, had a game on him, but it felt so good. And then uh, in the other two games I played today, I had Rhaegar healing me when I wasn't playing him myself. Rhaegar feels really solid. Yeah, if there wasn't a, a pile of empty potion bottles at my feet in BC because I was an alchemist, I'd be out of mana all the time throughout <laughs> the entire expansion. And that's what playing Rhaegar felt like. There was a lot of decision-making, you could call it, in a positive light. Really, you held on to your spells like crazy, and if you weren't getting a full hero value hit of all those bounces into heroes, because they do bounce off to, he uh, to heal lane minions, but that's not worth it. You would be out of mana over and over again. Yeah. Uh, ancestral healing got a 20% a hit uh, to uh, how much healing it actually puts out, um, but I don't care. This chain heal is better, and it's a base ability in the main way he's healing throughout the entire game. I would say that most have agreed with you, and I certainly do, and I agree with the dev comments here that say it was overhealing often if you were using it aggressively. And if you were using it in a sweet, totally sweet, I'm going to get you right before you die kind of way, they might have died. And then that's not going to work in the first place. So this encourages you to use ancestral healing at a nice kind of safe half health kind of moment. And I think Rhaegar is just going to, in general, perform a lot better. He was in nearly every drafted game I played last night. He's looking really good. But it was still all ancestral. Uh, no bloodlusts yet. Yeah. The same. Um, so does this mean we're just going to all start uh, playing against Rhaegars uh, by intentionally getting a target down halfway so that the Ancestral comes out and then switch to the target we actually want to kill? Maybe, right? Kind of kind of bait it out. I mean, certainly this has always felt the best on a big old tank when it rolled through and you would combine it with your level 13 Earth Shield to get that 12% maximum health shield on top of it so you could catch that last second big heal and use the earth shield as the padding in the forefront he's also got some options now to maybe compete with cleanse people you know there's so few cleanses left in the game people are going to be very aggressive about your cleanse being picked up if you're regar but farsight got a nice little buff and as we saw in the mid-season brawl sight means you never take damage in the first place yeah and there's no need to heal that damage if you don't take it yep i mean it's still up against cleanse uh, totemic projection as well. Like th these are, I mean, cleanse is the most popular by far, but I like moving my totem. <laughs> it's, it's a fun build and the sparsight is more powerful than Chromie's version of it. So this could have a really good impact. You don't, you're not going to get ganked if you can see the enemy team. Yep. 
unless someone's not paying attention, of course, which can happen. Yeah, no, I, I love it. This is just a personal thing. I, I, if, if all the Rhaegars I played with started going Farsight, I would be very okay with it. Uh, and then finally, I'm just very excited about the changes to Rising Storm. And um, I'm sorry if you disagree, but if I end up in, or you end up game with me and I'm on Rhaegar, I am going Rising Storm for the next week or so. Well, in level four, Stormcaller competes really well with Feral Heart, as you can now gain more mana than the cast. So previously, 60 mana to get an Earth or a Lightning Shield out, and you could make back a whole whopping 40 of that by hitting lots and lots of enemies. And it could be lane minions, so that helps out. But now you can get a full hundred back, and you can, you know, increase your budget. Yeah, yeah, I like Stormcaller quite a bit it's been like this underdog talent for a while if you've been keeping an eye on Rhaegar statistics it's one of those ones that uh has the lowest amount of picks uh from the stats available to us but actually has the highest win percentage which makes sense because Rhaegar had mana issues then if you were countering your own mana issues you got to participate i'll i'll be curious to see how this Rhaegar does when he gets into more hero league Rhaegar right now is very susceptible to a dangerous front line. Garrosh, of course. Your main support, butt bites in. Guess who's now in melee range of the Garrosh? Yep. Well, before we move on, this brings us kind of to the end of the patch uh, that actually went live. So, oh, and so much we didn't talk about. Yeah. Tons we, of things. We, Read it for yourself, of course. We skipped, yeah, because we're already an hour in and we, we have really big news to discuss. Uh, but before we get to all of that... We have some folks to thank, and those are uh, those of you over at patreon.com slash ITN who support Into the Nexus. Uh, we really appreciate it. We're actually approaching 400 patrons, uh, and we are moving up again as we move uh, closer to our, our pro opinion goal. This is where we pay a second guest a, a month to come on the show. Usually it's Dunk Train, uh, but if we hit this goal, we'll be able to pay pros for their time to come on and share their knowledge with us. So we really appreciate it. If uh, you would go over to patreon.com slash ITN and consider giving us a dollar or two per episode if you like what we do here. On this episode, we want to thank uh, some of our newer patrons. Thank you to Rob V, Brad B, Ethan H, uh, Stefan H, and Scott. We'll go with an M-I. Thank you, Scott M-I. And we are at the end of a month, which means next Thursday is our next Patreon bonanza. That's when we come back after dinner, fire up the stream, and play Team League games with our patrons. So if you want to sign up for that, go to patreon.com slash ITN and sign up because we're going to go play some games next week. It will be a good week to do it. The last week of any season is always the most fantastic because everyone's just trying to get in there and get the rewards. You're going to face the wackiest teams you ever had, the most hodgepodge mom and pop teams available, and it's a lot of fun. I hope you all will join us. Like Garrett said, patreon.com slash ITN. We've made great progress towards our next goal. Thank you so much, everybody who signed up. Yeah. Uh, how many games are we planning to do next week? Five. Yeah, and those signups will go live right after the show. Very cool. I'm going to bust a move and say if we hit 400 patrons, so if 10 people sign up between now and next Thursday, we'll make it six. Sounds good. <laughs> Let's do it six. Uh, all right. Rainer and Asmund in reworks. They're finally coming, Kyle. I know a lot of folks are probably excited for Asmund, but I'm so excited for Rainer changes. I can't wait. Let's talk about them. Let's talk about them right now. Uh, so there are videos up, very great video videos with Cloakin detailing exactly what's going on. Uh, but getting into Rainer here, Adrenaline Rush. It's not automatic anymore. You got to hit E. You got to activate it. It restores. I always you take the talent so I could activate it anyway. So <laughs> yes. Yes. So that, well, good. Now that's how it always works. It now restores a percentage of health. The big thing here is that the cooldown is longer, but don't let that get you down because it now has its own kind of sort of singular built-in battle momentum. As you land attacks on enemies, the cooldown is reduced for Adrenaline Rush. Sweet. I feel like... I, like, I don't know how fast this is going to be as far as how quickly it reduces the cooldown, but... Are Rangers just going to like start running out of mana because they're just re- adrenaline rushing constantly? You know, we don't know if that's going to cost any mana. And when it was a automatic cast, it, of course, didn't steal from your mana and go, oh, sorry, you don't have any mana. Guess guess you don't get to heal with your passive. <laughs> yep. That's a good question. Yep. Uh, and then Rainer's Raider is losing the S. It's just Raider. You're getting one. You're getting one Banshee, but that Banshee is now controllable. 
Rainer is becoming a hunter from World of Warcraft. <laughs> More and so than, like, Rexar is. This sounds exactly like Misha. You can... And just like your previous Banshees, you could still kind of target them, but you would take them bizarre places because they were summoned on a timed life, and you just try to get as much done with them as possible. Now this goes out, pokes around, and when you return it back to you, it starts to regenerate. Yeah, as long as it's not taking damage, it regenerates health, so it's not timed. It's just there until it dies. That's so freaking cool. A good way to compete with Hyperion doing all the building damage, this being more of your team fight aspect. Yeah, yeah, I'm very excited about this. Uh, and then he's got a new trait. Uh, he still has his range bonus, but the new trait is called Acquire Weak Spot. And so the way this works is that every fourth shot does increased damage and splashes to all nearby enemies. There doesn't appear to be a maximum amount of enemies that this splash can hit as long as they're all within the radius. So very much the Leoric rework, rewarding multiple auto attacks, allowing you to maybe even like Samuro, save up that one auto attack so that when you arrive on the field of battle, your first shot is the most impactful, splashing across the whole enemy team and lots of talents interacting with this guy. Oh, you can even see it in the video that they put up. I believe that I believe it's a, he charges it up on a Diablo, shoots the Diablo three times and then switches and, and puts the super attack onto a Chromie. Yeah, well, it actually, throughout the video, he is stutter-stepping like a champ, which is just <laughs> good advertising, because you should be. Yeah, it, it, it looks like someone playing Rainer. It's it's good. I dig it. I'm. Do you know, and I couldn't find this information anywhere, so I guess you don't know. We all have to guess. Are all the shots weak, in, weak spots, or are just the fourth bonus splashy shot, the weak shot, that affects talents? I believe it's... Oh, I believe it's the fourth, like the one that's yeah. actually special, the one that's actually empowered. That's the way I assumed it. I hadn't even questioned it until now. Now you're making there's me all sorts it. of crazy talents, like increasing your damage by 1% every time you hit a weak spot. So I guess it's probably the fourth hit. It has to be the fourth hit. That would, it would, be, that would be completely bonkers otherwise. Every time you land a basic attack, gain 1% damage bonus. I can dream. No. Yeah, no, 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 no. Yeah, so the, the ta the, there are three new talents that uh, modify the new Acquire Weak Spot trait. The first one is the quest that you just kind of referenced. It's called Veteran Marksman, uh, and it's that every time uh, the primary target of Acquire Weak Spot is a hero, permanently increases its damage bonus by 1%. This, this, this confirms it in my mind. How can you have a primary, a primary target unless there's Splash? So if there's Splash, it's the fourth empowered attack. I believe it. Yeah. So, uh, cool. Uh, level seven, there's a new talent called Unstable Compound, and it increases the area of Acquire Weak Spot by 15%. So this is making the radius with which the splash will connect larger, and enemies hit by it are slowed by 10% for three seconds. This is the only way you'll ever get Kyle, by the way, to take a 10% slow talent is by uh, giving something else that's more interesting. Or putting it on Rainer. That too. That too. <laughs> And then level 20, there's a level 20 talent for this trait, and it's called Weak Spot Acquired. And the way that it works is that enemy heroes that are the primary target of Acquire Weak Spot have their armor reduced by 25 for two seconds. Cool stuff. I think the thing I'm most excited about here is what they showcased in the video on his level one. You have this attack lots of heroes, increase your damage, but it's also up against an executioner talent at level one. And there's also a level one exterminator, which deals more damage to non-heroes. Can you imagine a world that may be in our near future where we all dive for Rainer on Battlefield of Eternity? I like that world. Bring it. Me, me too. I accept our old Marine overlord. He's a, you know, he's a staple. He's, he's, he is our representing Marine. And I just want to see him. I am we'll very, uh, I'm very pleased uh, with this on paper. Uh, obviously, we haven't had a chance to play this. Um, well, what about you? Are you going to be, are you, are you out in the garage polishing up your Rainer? I'm very curious to see what talents attach to his adrenaline rush, if there is any sort of self-cleanse in there. Um, of course, we were all taking the movement speed talents that allowed you to catch up to people. Now you have a 10% slow, and with your range, you'll be able to catch up to them. 
and do some good damage there. But the Zul Jin concerns come to mind. And if we have talents to avoid those aspects, and a pushback does help, of course. I love the I've always loved the pushback for interrupting tanks who wanna, you know, get on my juicy marine. <laughs> I'm with you. Well, he's not losing that. It's not going anywhere. And then there's Asthma Dan. A lot going on here. Uh, big uh, thing to start off, I, I'm going to start off with globes and stacks uh, because Annihilation stacks now come from killing minions or hitting enemy heroes with a globe of Annihilation. Just hitting them. Uh, the thing to note here, though, is that the impact area graphic is now visible sooner uh, so you get more time to dodge if you're on the receiving end of one of these. I like that, and that suggests that those other changes we've discussed in the past, one of the devs getting on Reddit some time ago and saying that they, they've considered Chromie getting some visual indicators where her dragon breath is going to come down to be a serious nerf, uh, but something they could do in the future to rebalance her kit. This shows two things. Those proposed changes may be coming across a lot of different heroes, and that could be really good. But this also shows that they are continuing their investment in quests, which is a mixed bag. Hmm. This isn't like, is this the type of Asmodean you like playing? Not particularly, because he's a, this would be where I butt heads with the idea of a specialist, where I can do lots of different activities instead of farming one particular aspect of myself. Hmm. I don't mind quests on Alarak because it just rewards me for doing what I'm doing in the first place. And maybe, you know, to newer Asmodan players, this rewards that as well. I feel like I never get to see Kalthazad because the gamble of it all is just too much. Hmm. I'm, I'm with you there. This one I don't mind as much because at least now I'm getting stacks from hitting enemy heroes as well. It helps it out. Uh, but still, at, I'm, kind, I'm also kind of with you. At its core, I don't know if I want to go into a game with Asmodan being like, all right, got to get my stacks. Got to time those minion kills. I do think that they are very aware, though, of and they, they play the game, too. In fact, we've heard from the devs that, you know, when they get to work every day, they sit down and play games first and then get to work. They are aware that there are some frustrating things in this game, and I think All Shell Burn is certainly one of them. And by making it a set duration with bonus damage on the back end is a great way to reward you for staying connected for that period of time. Without that whole, like, oh, I messed up, I have no movement speed, oh, <laughs> look at your watch, oh, <laughs> I'm not getting out of this. Gotcha. Well, are any of the, so at level one, every single talent augments uh, Annihilation stacks in some way. Are any of them cooling your jets a bit? I do find the auto attack talents very interesting, mainly because his his weird little, like, uh, washing machine kind of body style of that little fist that flies out a little piece of piece of flame is going to reward some stacks if you hit heroes below 75 percent health i knew which, i knew you were going to zoom, zoom in on this one because i was i was typing this up today and i'm like hmm auto attack asmodan i bet that's gonna pique kyle's interest I, i'm a little mad for auto attacks but i mean same with smash varian right i'm a little mad for right clicking people and removing the chance of missing <laughs> So here you go. Here's a way for you to take Asmodan, play differently, play a way you want to play, but still be doing the correct thing. Unless uh, everyone in the community is like, you went wrath, rabble, rabble, rabble. Right, which could happen, but there's also a globe talent in here, it seems, hitting here. Oh, with globes, never mind. It's called the globe. Oh, yes, yes. I, I got my globes mixed up. Sorry, my bad. I, I, at a certain point, I was sick of typing. <laughs> I, was si I got sick of typing Annihilation. Uh, yeah, yeah. Gluttony increases the number of stacks Annihilation gained uh, by hitting heroes with your Globes of Annihilation from two to three. So you, you get more stacks. Uh, and then the uh, other one is called Greed, and it increases the time minions will grant you Annihilation from one and a half seconds to three seconds. So it severely increases uh, the window there. There's also quests and rewards for all of these. Uh, the quest for Greed is after 
after gaining 200 annihilation, the damage from your globe of annihilation deals against minions and mercenaries is increased by 20%. Uh, and then we were just talking about gluttony, which is the one uh, where you want to hit heroes with your globes of annihilation and increases the stacks from two to three. If you get 200 annihilation, uh, it then... Uh, each enemy you hit with a globe reduces its cooldown by a quarter of a second, and it's doubled against heroes. So you get the, the reduction whether it's minions or heroes, but heroes getting you double of that reduction. I do appreciate the double down on the globe of annihilation. Just saying, all right, guys, we got enough heroes in the game. We don't really need to diversify this. I know some of you like your ultra burn builds. I know some of you like your uh, demon summoning builds. What if we just took like half those talents, baked it in, but we made it very clear that Asmodan is about orbs? Yeah, they, I mean, they straight up made his globe a heroic, <laughs> right? Like he has a he has a new heroic. They got rid of Blackpool. It is gone. The new one is called Tide of Sin, and uh, it's a hundred mana. It's on a thirty second cooldown, and you activate it to make your next globe of annihilation not only cost no mana but deal fifty percent more damage. That sounds innocuous, but what you're going to have these annihilation stacks from doing basically anything. Well, and, and cut out the middleman and cut out the confusion for new players who might accidentally not know how to might not even know how to alt cast something below their feet to make this even easier to do while you're looking clear across the map. I mean, how many of us while learning Asmodan put a black pool out in front of us where we wanted the orb to land? Whoops. Well, I guess I get no bonus damage for that. Yeah, well, I don't know. You learned that pretty quick. Um there's a, a couple of uh, articles uh, up on Inven Global where they got a couple of pros to talk about the Rainer and the Asmo rework. And uh, McIntyre is pretty concerned about Blackpool going away. Yeah. What was his primary concern about it? Just that it's gone. I mean, it, it, that is the the air horn part of the Asmo dunk. And that's tragic. <laughs> I'm sure uh, Tide of Sin will now make that noise. And then we did buff the full lane, so you'd sometimes kind of put it under yourself and your fellow summons while you were pushing down a wall. Right, there was more utility with Blackpool. This is just, hey, my globe it hits like a truck now. That's all this does for one globe every 30 seconds. Yeah, I guess the big concern there is uh, globe machine, AOE super range. Why aren't you playing Chromie, perhaps? It's kind of my thought as well. Although Asmo was the original Chromie, so. He was, and he has a very big health pool, and uh, Chromie can get out, but Asmodan takes a long time to kill. So there is a bit of a draft exchange there. Yeah. Um, but there's some other, there's some non-globe things actually going on here. His W Summon Demon Warrior has been changed. It no longer has two charges, at least baseline. And, uh, but the, on the upside, the summons now have increased health and deal constant AoE damage. And then when you get to level four, every single talent option here empowers your summon demon warriors in some way. Um, so Army of Hell is the only talent that has retained its name, but it's it's very different now. Uh, the way Army of Hell is going to work at level four is that summon demon spawn uh, is going to spawn an additional demon, but its cooldown is increased by 10 seconds. So this still isn't giving you charges. It's just giving you two demons right away. I love the idea of the demons now doing AOE damage. It was a fun talent in the first place. And baking it in is great, but it also means that you've got less RNG in the game, which I feel like the de developers have been really good at avoiding. By making this AoE damage, it's no longer who did it auto attack with its AI script. Was it in the area? Well, you got some value out of that demon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, other other demon talents at level four, uh, there's Hellforged Armor. So your warriors and lieutenants are going to gain 35 armor and they last four seconds longer. So they're just beefier all around. And then the final one is Battleborn. This talent uh, makes your at your basic attacks reduce the cooldown of Summon Demon Warrior by half a second and your Demon Lieutenant by one full second. Basic attacks. All right. All right. Okay. All right. Yep. Yep. I like it. It's I cool. like it. And you're gonna, be, and even if you, uh, even if you're using all shall burn, you're still gonna be able to get basic attacks in because it's, it's a set cha channel time now, and it does bonus damage upon completion. You know what would do it for me? Gun fingers. That's all I need. <laughs> Instead of the little fish uh, shooting the balls, just little. Uh, nope. Woo. Nope. No. Nope. But Vegeta did it. You love Vegeta. I love Vegeta, but I don't like Yu Yu Hakusho. Oh, okay. <laughs> 
But did Vegeta, did Vegeta just didn't do that. Frieza just points. Vegeta. No. What are you talking didn't about? He, did he? I thought he did. If old, he, old, old stuff. I'm not up on anything new with like cat men and things I'm like that. I'm talking about new stuff. I haven't seen, or I, I'm talking about old stuff. I haven't seen the new stuff. If Vegeta ever shot with gun fingers, I forgot about it. <laughs> you omitted it from your mind. Yes, I did. I did. I, I'm a Final Flash fan. Thank you very much. But anyways, um, all, yeah, so All Shall Burn is now a set channel time. Does bonus damage upon completion. There's a couple new talents for that. There's Master of Destruction at 7. Uh, all Shall Burn uh, damage uh, damages all nearby enemies in a wide radius at the end of the cast. So this is, the, there's already b d bonus damage upon completion baked into All Shall Burn, but now that bonus damage upon completion does a big explosion in a rather large radius. Uh, around the target of your all shall burn and it grants you annihilation stacks for every enemy hero hit in that blast you can actually see this using the blackpool graphic in the video yep well it was made need to find something to do with it yeah it's gone now yep and then uh 16 there's one called hell rift and all shall burn summons a demon warrior and empowers all demon warriors that are currently active that's pretty neat i like this that this duration is shorter than a Leoric Drain Hope. It is pretty fast. And the damage bonus they showed looked impactful. I like this a lot. I, I think it just reduces the frustration. It's one thing to see Asmodan burning down your fort, but it's another thing to hear that clang, clang of the lockers as he slowly walks around in a circle. Breaks my heart. Uh, and then finally, you got Trample at level 20. You can charge in any direction, and enemies that are caught, caught in the charge are slowed. You do have the health to pull this off. Kel'Thuzad actually has a Shifting Malice, I believe it's called, where he can do a sort of forward vault that deals damage, but good luck getting that thing under your belt because it's a level 20 thing. This is just a nice little dodge. Yeah. In most cases. But uh, so there you have it. That's the Asmodean rework that'll be coming soon. All right. I'm excited. I'm curious to see what, just like, you know, Rainer here, if Hyperion and then his demons all gets changed around. Hmm. That'd be interesting. Either I way, these do match, I think, a lot of the updates and changes in philosophy we've had. This cuts off some of the power creep that has been experienced across other heroes. Really smart changes. Looking forward to them. I'm so stoked about Rainer. Uh, I was worried. I was a little bit worried they were going to make him too complex. Uh, I don't think they have. Uh, but that being said, being able to micromanage your Banshee, that adds a nice layer of complexity for those looking for it. Yeah, if you want to. Yeah, exactly. So uh, that, that we, we did it. We made it to the end of all of the all of the changes. A um, lot of changes uh, to Heroes of the Storm right now, live in the game right now, and uh, some big changes coming to two of our favorite heroes. Um, no, we knew we weren't going to be doing strategies or emails because we knew it was going to be a thick show. Uh, so let's just, uh, take a moment and talk about our URL giveaway. If you wrote in, uh, if you tweeted at us, uh, if you tweeted at ITN cast with hashtag alter tips, the winners have been chosen and those codes have gone out. Thank you very much, Kyle, for doing that earlier today and last night. Absolutely. Uh, and we have some of our favorite alter tips. Right here, uh, first one is from Livid Nerd. Uh, Livid Nerd says to prioritize the mid lane before 10, it provides the greatest tactical advantage for the objective. After 10, prioritize the other lanes since that's where the bosses are. Can't argue this with is this a logic. Great, a great idea. And in fact, I also got a tip from, uh, I'm just going to call him Ghoul here, suggesting a 104 split if you win the objective. And as you can see there, we're ignoring the middle. Great to get that middle under control early, particularly before the objective, get it pushed out in advance. If you take those knolls, they will then connect with the towers, getting guaranteed value, and in the enemy's mind, moving faster. Great thing to be thinking about right now. Your minions, your mercenaries, your Sylvanas even, pushing down the lane, it takes some time. And that time allows counters to be built up and for the enemy team to react. If it's nice and pushed out to the wall when you take those Merc camps, the first time they'll really appear on the minimap doing something important is when they actually reach the building wall. The first time someone should see Sylvanas in lane in this kind of thought philosophy is when she's already on the building, not pushing all the way there. Get another hero to cover that for you. 
I used this one zero four split last night. It means you have one person in top, usually your specialist, pushing along with that one just to make some noise. Leave middle alone. Middle always connects first. It's the shortest distance. The enemy players will always react to that one first. Four stack, one of them. I've been choosing the bottom to get a maximum armor and push with that hard. That sounds disgusting. It's good. Uh, Dion, Dion Roy wrote in and said, play an aggressive comp. Keep the other team zoned out when taking the camp. Think of it like BOE. That's a good way to put it. It And it like BOE, if someone needs to get you XP, if someone's running late, take the defensive position, then move forward when you've all gathered together. Yeah. Uh, Scott Clark says, just draft Sonia. Always draft Sonia. She's a goddess of war and cares not what battleground you're on. Okay. Yeah, I can't really argue with that one. Last fight week, we talked about how most heroes aren't able to solo the camps with all the minions spawning. Sonya can while keeping her health high. And then she can get the channel off because she does it fast enough. It's actually a good thing that there's too many things spawning for her. Zagara God writes in and just has the best name. That's a good <laughs> I, I, when, when I rewarded this fine tip, they only had one tweet. And it was a Zagara quote. So I think they made this yes. account for this very contest. It was yes. fantastic. Yeah, uh, but Zagar God's tip was both of Samuro's clones, Misha and Abathur's ultimate evolution, count as heroes while in the cavalry's aura, each adding plus five armor to the cavalry. A lone Samuro can stack the cavalry's armor to plus 15 for huge pushing power. Kerrigan's Ultralisk sadly does not count. As a summon, does not, but really cool tip that I hadn't thought about. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's a scary Sammy tip. Plus, Sammy would be pretty good at uh, taking a point by himself. Yeah, he, he's he's complicated because every bit of damage you take is huge. It's going to spread across all of your summons. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm laughing because I'm reading this next one and I guess I missed it earlier when I was proofreading this stuff. Nazer6614 says, you can't throw people into the open ice holes as garage. It's true, you <laughs> can't. <laughs> not an exclamation point, not a frowny face, just a statement. <laughs> yeah. Like like an angry Garrosh wrote this himself. <laughs> I'm so mad that you can't do this. That's great. Uh, Pad Fan Baker says draft for the team fight, focusing on range. I found that double support with Haranda has been working in my games. Yeah, people tend to clump up for that owl and that uh, in those fights around the objective. It's a narrow little hallway. Having double support means you can regenerate off the poke of your enemy. But here, focusing on Taranda means you have poke of your own to wear them down while you stay healthy. Exactly. Uh, and Geo says, Chromie, solo defend objective with time traps and sandblasts while the rest of the team soaks. Die a little inside. <laughs> Chromie and Stukov are getting frequent bans on this map right now. Chromie, just like your Towers of Doom, will solo defend this for an extended period of time. If people are trying to move through the mud, Stukov puts down his hand. They're silenced and slowed. It's awful. Yep. Those are two very powerful heroes here. That was in Gonzo We Trust's uh, suggestion. He said, Stuko lurking arm equals GG. Trust me, I have a 100% win rate on this map. I trust you. I do, too. I do, too. Radar Barber says, get opponent to chase you through the mud, and once you're out, turn around and stun them, then either escape or kill. Step three, profit. <laughs> Wait, aren't you both slow? <laughs> well, it's not that thick. And here, with like a Muradin kind of aspect, you might be able to jump out. Mm. Gotcha. Uh, Gulab Jemman. Oh, that's the split we already read. Oh, gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, Mokli, like, Mok Liam Toe is how I'm going to pronounce this one. Defy gravity. Lucio can wall ride on nothing around the bridge in the center of the map. Uh, you, you know those holes where the ice are, where there's no walls? Yep. Yeah, he can speed them and boost on those. <laughs> but you can't get a scatter arrow on Hanzo off of those? Oh, can you not? I haven't actually... I have tried it now that i'm thinking about it yeah but they're, they're, they're they're voids right the yeah. arrow should go over them they're moving the wrong direction for such activities exactly exactly <laughs> oh my god uh Cursimus says they've had great luck with quick auto attack heroes to maximize the cavalry buff yep i thought about that but it's also important to say that this is a buff and there are tethered abilities like phoenix like your gargantuan when you cast a summon, 
it uses a snapshot of your current power level. So make sure that if you want to cast one of these duration abilities, that you cast it from inside. But really cool thought here about using quick auto attackers so that as that thing gets burned down over a short amount of time, you can get the maximum value out of it. Mm. And then Neosect wrote in with, I believe the first hashtag Alterac tip that we received and still the best one, writing, don't stand in the mud, don't stand in the icy water, don't stand in the boss's ice ball. Don't stand so close to me. <laughs> if I could give you more than the URL code, I would, Neosect. You brought such a smile to my face. It's good. It's good. Oh. Makes them cry. We really have the greatest listeners in all of podcastum. I agree. Thank you all for your hashtags. We didn't read them all. There's even more in the show notes that we uh, didn't read for time. Go check them out or just go on Twitter, type in hashtag Alterac tips and read them. There are so many. We got so many submissions. Uh, anyways, uh, do we give them out via email? Or do we give them out via Twitter? Twitter, right? This was yep, Twitter. You're, check your Twitter there. Let us know that you received and activated them so that we can track that for our own purposes. Gotcha. And if you didn't get them, it means you're probably not following us for the DM and shame on you. <laughs> But whatever the case is, thanks for the uh, thanks for the submissions, everybody. This was really awesome seeing how many of you uh, had tips to give, actually put some thought into it, and still needed a URL. So, well, hopefully. and I used these tips last night with my own team, and they are very impactful. This was really cool activity for us to do. I enjoyed it immensely. Yep, and that's gonna do it for this episode of Until the Nexus. We made it, folks. We knew it was gonna be a fat one. We made it to the other side. Thank you again to our patrons over patreon.com slash ITN. Uh, if you like what Kyle and I do here, if you get value from here, from uh, Into the Nexus, you want to give some value back, patreon.com slash ITN. Huge thanks to our producers, by the way, Declan H and Cheesy Bob. Thank you very much. Uh, you can get Into the Nexus t-shirts over at shirts.amove.tv. We also have custom etched glassware, coffee mugs, and whatnot over at etched.amove.tv. TV. You can join us live Thursdays at 5 p.m. Eastern on twitch.tv slash TV. That's where you can find the live chat room. You can come join us live. When Kyle or I get hung up on a thought or can't remember the name of something very specific, that's when you can come in and save the day by yelling it at us in text form in the chat room. Uh, the Twitter for the show is at ITNCast. Uh, that's where we were doing our Alterac Tips URL code giveaway. Big thanks again to the Heroes team, by the way, for sending those URL codes over. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Heroes team, if you're listening. And then we got to thank Gorath for our intro music and Brian Griffith music for our outro. So other than that, just around the table, which is across the table because it's only two of us, Kyle Ferguson, where can everybody find you? You should find me at twitch.tv slash Kyle Ferguson. This week was a phenomenal set of morning shows starting at 10 a.m. Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Heroes of the Storm. And as these updates rolled out, I had a fantastic time hanging out with all of you and going through those notes bit by bit you can also find that over at youtube.com slash kyle ferguson two s's in ferguson i'm garrett art on twitter if you want to go follow me there i've actually been pretty active on my instagram lately which i never promote but i do have one it's gare underscore gw you spell it g-a-r-e underscore gw that's where i post a lot of non video game stuff a lot of cars a lot of cocktails never at the same time though uh, go check that out. <laughs> <laughs> All of the other... <laughs> I, never... I, was, I wasn't expecting you to laugh that much. Uh, <laughs> um, other than that, all the other podcasts I do are at amove.tv. We wrapped up Westworld Season 2 spoilers on Embrace the Spoilers Westworld this week. Scott Johnson joined us for that. So you can hear Scott Johnson, Jocelyn, and myself spoil the entire Season 2 of Westworld. Um, we also put up our spoiler episode of... Uh, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, which I surprisingly enjoyed. It was kind of fun. And I, we talked about it on Week Sauce as well. So if you don't know about that, Kyle and I have another show. It's like this one, except we talk about everything except Heroes of the Storm. So if you ever wanted to hear us talk about literally anything, you should listen to Week Sauce. It goes up every Monday afternoon. It is a Monday morning, like it's like a geek morning show. Because it's still kind of like geeky, nerdy, stream of consciousness. Uh, but it's in the morning for Kyle. It's uh, technically noon for myself. But A fantastic warm-up to the week, an excellent catch-up after the weekend with my buddy Garrett here. Check it out. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, uh, I have a lot of fun doing it. It's a, it's a, 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 a project of passion. Some, it's, it's basically the sequel to A-Move Radio. Yeah. Which was the sequel to This Week in Blitz. Yeah. 
And uh, every time I see Ben, by the way, I'm telling him, hey, man, when are you coming on Week Sauce? When are we doing the AMU radio reunion? When's it happening, man? I'm, I'm wearing him down, I promise. Good. Yeah, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. But go check that out. Week Sauce, spelt like days of the week, all one word. Anywhere podcasts can be found. That's going to wrap it up for this episode of Into the Nexus. Thank you all for tuning in. Thanks again for the Ultra Act tips. Thanks again for the codes, Heroes team. Until next week, good luck and have fun. Take care.